Hello, my name is Heidi Smith and I'm the director of NJ Family Care Outreach. And this is in the Division of Medical Assistance and Health Services within the Department of Human Services. Today I will be training on New Jersey's Medicaid response to the hospitalized inmate. I will go over what the law says about how and when the state and federal funds can be used appropriately to cover the inmate when they're hospitalized, our short and long-term approaches to that, and then I'll go over the newly released inmate presumptive eligibility application and how to complete it and when it should be used. So let's get started. Medicaid expansion created a new population of Medicaid eligible individuals and it's anticipated that the majority of the prisoners are income eligible for this new expanded Medicaid. NJ Family Care is New Jersey's public health insurance program and that includes Medicaid. Public health insurance in New Jersey, or Medicaid, is called NJ Family Care. So throughout today's presentation, I'll be talking about NJ Family Care or Medicaid. Those eligible for NJ Family Care are given a comprehensive package of benefits, which include dental, mental health, and substance use services. They also have an opportunity to enroll in a managed health care program or an HMO, where most of their services will be administered. Presumptive eligibility is temporary coverage while their full eligibility is being determined. PE coordinators are trained to know the eligibility criteria for PE for, fam for family care and they know how to complete appropriate applications. PE coordinators know the applicant cannot be over 64 years old. They have to be a U.S. citizen or a qualified immigrant. They know the eligibility criteria for PE. An uninsured adult that it presents at a hospital for care could be presumed eligible by a PE certified hospital. No documentation is needed. Everything is self-attest. There is no managed care enrollment with presumptive eligibility or PE. It's all fee for service during this period. Let's talk a little bit about Medicaid expansion. Health reform, or ACA, or the federal health law, provided an optional expansion of the Medicaid eligibility. New Jersey is an expansion state. We opted to expand Medicaid, and we're now providing it through NJ Family Care, or Medicaid, and it's for adults who live in the community with income of about $15,500, or about $12,000 a month for a single adult. The majority of inmates will be below that income level. This newly eligible population is eligible for federal financial participation or an enhanced rate. Until 2016, all individuals enrolled in this, in this newly eligible population will receive a 100% federal match, which will gradually decline to 90% in July 2019 or thereafter. The federal match is used to cover Medicaid services only. So let's take a look at the law and the inmates in Medicaid. NJ Family Care Medicaid is covered with both state and federal funds when someone is enrolled in the program. New Jersey shares the cost with the federal government. The 1965 federal law says that the feds will not share the medical cost of inmates unless they are in a medical institution. The state law reiterates this. And this further clarifies that the exception of Medicaid expenditures are when the inmates is in a hospital. And we're gonna look at that exception on the next slide. If there is no federal financial support for the inmate, the medical cost will be covered by the correctional facility. Historically, all inmate medical costs were covered with 100% state or county funds state funds if it's a state facility, and county funds for a county facility. This is a bigger look at the federal exception. In other words, this exception is when inmates are eligible for Medicaid. In other words, there's an exception to when inmates are eligible for Medicaid, and that is when they are hospitalized. They are admitted. There is an intent that they will be in the hospital for 24 hours. Using the state's Medicaid program, or as we call it, NJ Family Care, which is administered by the Department of Human Services, 
we can help correctional facilities reduce the amount they already spend by providing inpatient hospital services by substituting Medicaid funds for their county or their state dollars. So let's take a look at the numbers so that we can see what we're talking about. Currently, there are 1.5 million people enrolled in the NJ Family Care Program. And out of that 1.5 million people, 250,000 of them are single adults and enrolled in NJ Family Care. With state and federal funds, New Jersey pays contracted managed care providers each month for their care. And that would be for those 1.5 million people. These are called capitated payments. So that would include the 250,000 single adults. However, looking at the county numbers only, in the county facilities, there's an average of about 17,000 adults. So most of those adults are either eligible or already on NJ Family Care. So let's take a look at the state comptroller's finding. In May 2013, the Office of State Comptroller and the Medicaid Fraud Division released an audit report on their appropriately paid public benefits that were received by inmates from 2009 to 2011. Most relevant for us is that more than seven million dollars of state and county funds were paid inappropriately for inmates. A Medicaid claims analysis took a deeper dive and they confirmed that about five million dollars was inappropriately paid out for county inmates. The Medicaid office must know who has been incarcerated so that their eligibility can be corrected and a cost savings realized. As a cost savings initiative, the correctional facility would like to be able to have their hospitalized inmate charges billed to Medicaid instead of being used by county dollars to cover those charges, county or state. Medicaid would like to know when our beneficiaries become inmates. Medicaid would like to know when inmates have existing Medicaid coverage so that the individual can be disenrolled from their managed care and a cost savings realized. Medicaid needs to know when a Medicaid beneficiary has been incarcerated. Medicaid has to know when an inmate has been admitted for inpatient hospitalization so that we can just use Medicaid fee-for-service coverage to pay the claim and not the correctional facilities funds. The correctional facilities in Medicaid. The correctional facilities can save their allocated funds and their, their allocated funds and use federal funds made available to more appropriately cover inmate hospitalization. Once a person is incarcerated, their full NJ family care coverage must be edited to cover inpatient hospitalization only. The state can save money by not paying capitation to managed care organizations for the beneficiaries that are incarcerated since they will not be using those benefits. As mentioned, the state pays a monthly capitation rate for every person that's enrolled in managed care. Since coverage is not being used or cannot be accessed during the incarceration, it's a cost savings to the state to disenroll that person from managed care while they're incarcerated. Due to the short-term nature of the correctional facility population, there's a multiple of issues that are being addressed with respect to efforts of limiting their benefits while they are incarcerated. Any inmate or hospitalization is also usually short term. With hospital admission, there must be a 24 hour intent for that admission. But Medicaid first has to know when a Medicaid beneficiary is incarcerated. They, the state only knows who's been incarcerated if they're informed. We hear from the managed care organizations, but we need to hear from the hospitals and we need to hear from the correctional facilities. So we've got to work together on this fix. And that's why we're having this training. We need to fix this problem. Medicaid has to know which claims are federally reimbursable. Right now, that would be a 100% match for anyone who is enrolled in the Medicaid expansion program. Medicaid has to know when the, ben when the Medicaid beneficiary becomes an inmate. Then we need to know when an inmate is admitted for inpatient hospitalization. Again, correctional facilities should not use their funds to cover inmate hospitalizations, but those are Medicaid eligible expenses. The state fiscal year 2014 Appropriation Act actually requires that the State Department of Human Services work with correction agencies to promote the proper enrollment 
into NJ Family Care for all eligible inmates requiring inpatient hospitalization. So here's a list of the people who have come together, the organizations and agencies that have come together to help work out this process that we're going to be talking about. So where are we today on this? DMAS, or the Division of Medical Assistance and Health Services, they met with John Donadio, and he's the executive director of the New Jersey Association of Counties, and two wardens, the Cape May County Jail Warden, Donald Lombardo, and the Passaic County Jail Warden, Michael Telletrico to discuss this inpatient hospital cost savings initiative. According to the New Jersey Association of Counties, we learned that 14 other states are also authorized to have an inmate hospital exception in the state law. As a survey was developed, and it went out distributed throughout the New Jersey County Jail Wards Association to obtain information from each county jail with regard to their hospital partnership. We have an MOU that's between DMOS, the Administrative Office of Courts, and the Office of Information Technology, or OIT, and that was signed in December 13, whereby the county correction agencies would make available a monthly file of individuals incarcerated in a county prison. So far, that file has not resulted in usable data, but efforts are underway to obtain more useful data. We're revising the MOU to change the file from monthly to daily. So let's talk about our long range plan. We're going to use data matching using the inmate files from the correctional facilities. NJ Family Care beneficiaries that are 19 to 64 that get incarcerated will have a special program code either in 98 or in 99 added to their eligibility segment in our eligibility system. The 98 will be used as the special program code for the Department of Corrections inmates, and a 99 will be used for inmates from the county facilities. The long-term fix is scheduled for 2014, by the end of 2014. Through data matching, the new inmate special program code, either 98 or 99, will be added to the inmate's eligibility se segment. The special program code will be person-specific and date-specific. Then the NJ Family Care coverage, which they have, will be limited to only hospitalization while the person is incarcerated. Only hospitalized inmates that do not have an active NJ Family Care Medicaid or active PE segment would need to have an inmate PE application completed so that their hospital stay can be covered by, state, by the state and their full eligibility can be determined upon release if the PE application is still timely. We will also be making changes to our eligibility system called REVs or EMEVs. And we're going to indicate that right on the EMEV system and you'll be able to see the 98 or the 99 indicator. This new indicator is going to suppress any managed care enrollment and the capitation payment. This is how the state will save money. Upon release, the file will be systemically adjusted so that their full eligibility can be restored and they will have appropriate coverage. The county correctional facility will then work directly with the CWA to identify any inmates that need to be enrolled in NJ Family Care upon release so that they have access to their care. The state facilities is working with the state vendor with their inmates that are up for release to assure that they have full NJ Family Care coverage upon release. So let's take a look at the sample screenshot and emails once the long-term fix is in. Here we've circled the special program code 98 that you'll be able to see once you pull up emails. And this is what it's going to look like. Hospital PE coordinators will see this in their eligibility screen on the emails system. The indicator will be adjusted systemically through the daily data matching process and upon discharge full eligibility will be restored. The PE certified hospitals used by the correctional facilities will utilize a PE process to help the state identify the inmates who are being admitted to the hospital. This is only for PE certified hospitals and only for eligible inmates that are being admitted for inpatient hospitalization. The online PE application has been enhanced so there's now an inmate PE version and only this P inmate PE version will add the inmate indicator. This indicator will identify the patient as an inmate. 
Once submitted, the inmate PE application will alert the state PE unit to disenroll them from managed care. PE must be initiated by a certified PE hospital with their PE staff when an eligible inmate is being hospitalized. Right now, this is the only way for us to know that an inmate has been hospitalized. The inmate PE process will continue for unenrolled inmates needing hospitalization. This online PE family care application will be then pended at the local county welfare agency or the county board of social services and it's going to await their release. The correctional facility would need to notify the local CWA to process that application when the inmate is being released so that full eligibility can be determined. All inmate PE applications will go to their local county board of social services or county welfare agency for a full determination. Inmate PE is only for eligible inmates that are admitted for inpatient hospitalization and we're using this a process to identify the inmates and services that are eligible for Medicaid reimbursement and limit their hospital uh, reimbursement, limit their benefit to hospital reimbursement only. This process is completely opposite to how we do presumptive eligibility applications now. Normally, we don't complete a PE application on anyone that has active NJ Family Care or an active PE segment. However, during this short-term fix only, and we're thinking it's through the fall of 2014, even if an inmate already has active Medicaid coverage, please complete an inmate PE application. This is the only way that NJ Family Care beneficiary this is the only way we will know that an NJ Family Care beneficiary is incarcerated and now they're hospitalized. The state PE unit will establish PE on anyone that's eligible and they'll only establish PE once every 12 months. This is a federal law, just like we do with NJ Family Care PE. However, the inmate PE application will serve to let us know that one of our beneficiaries has been incarcerated and is now hospitalized. Be sure to complete the correct online PE applications for inmates. We've shortened the familiar PE application by removing or auto-filling a lot of the answers and just leaving the relevant fields that need to be completed. Complete this only if an inmate is hospitalized and they're eligible for presumptive eligibility. The PE coordinators know about eligibility. They know uh, the age is 19 to 64. They know the income is considered to be zero. Citizenship status has to be determined. They have to reside in a New Jersey correctional facility, so they will be considered a New Jersey resident. Outpatient services are not Medicaid reimbursable. You would not do a PE application on someone who's receiving outpatient services, such as ER. Inmate PE segments will be given an indicator so that we can track any of the payable claims from the hospitals. Again, this is our short-term fix. The application will be used to notify the state PE unit that an inmate's been hospitalized. This online application will be si simultaneously sent to the CWA where the correctional facility is located for full NJ family care processing upon release. The hospital PE provider will get a letter about the disposition of the PE application. The inmate indicator will suppress letters to the beneficiary, and it's also going to suppress their health card. Let's look at, at the summary. Until the long-term systemic fix is completed, the online inmate PE application will alert the state that an NJ family care beneficiary or a potential beneficiary is now an inmate and has been admitted for inpatient hospitalization. The state will then know if the hospital claim is eligible to be paid by NJ family care, which will then be federally reimbursable. Normally, you don't do a PE if there's an active family care enrollment. However, the inmate PE application will serve as a way to indicate us that an inmate has been hospitalized. The state will use the inmate PE application as our notification to terminate their managed care coverage. Complete an inmate PE application even if the inmate has active NJ Family Care segment. A normal NJ Family Care PE segment will not indicate the inmate status 
for this hospital exception initiative. So complete an inmate PE application even if there is an active PE segment to the state and we'll know to adjust the segment. Again, your county partners would include your CWA, your correctional staff, and your partnering presumptive eligibility hospital and their staff. Just to recap, the long-term fix, which is slated for the end of the year, is, it, is going to add an indicator to the Medicaid segment, and that's going to limit their services to hospitalization only, and it's going to stop capitation payments. Upon their release, their policy would be updated systemically so that the policy is restored to the full benefits they had when they came in. An inmate PE would be completed on any unenrolled inmate that this is somebody who's not already on NJ Family Care once they are hospitalized. And this would begin their enrollment process. The short term fix would require the PE coordinator at the hospital to PE all hospitalized inmates. The CWA would again need to process any of the pended applications for full eligibility upon release from the county correctional facility if that application is still timely. The state vendor is working directly with the state corrections facility to process enrollments for their inmates that are being released. So let's review some of the questions that have resonated so far from this training. And this is something that the CWA and the hospital and the correctional facility need to discuss and work out so that they can understand how the process will work for them. Which one of the local agencies should take the lead for the county to plan any of the follow-up meetings to discuss the detail on how this would work in their county? On average, how many inmates get hospitalized each month? Should there be an inmate coordinator also identified at the correctional facility and maybe another one at the local CWA. The PE application asks for a home address. So that's going to be where the correctional facility is. What's the address that the PE coordinator should be using on those applications? The PE application is also going to ask for a telephone number. And this is going to ask for whose telephone number at the correctional facility should be used so that in case there's any follow-up, there'll be a phone number that can be used for contact. Who at the county facility, the county correctional facility, will alert the local CWA that an inmate is being released so that their pended application can be processed? Who from the state corrections is making sure that an NJ Family Care application is completed and how much lead time is needed? How will the hospital billing department know how to bill Medicaid for certain hospitalizations and not the correctional facility so that they do not overbill? The PE application will be electronically submitted to the local CWA where the correctional facility is located. What if the inmate is being released to a different county? How will the correctional facility notify the hospital when they know they have a hospitalized inmate to be sure a PE application was done on them while they were in the hospital? Now we're going to take a look at the hospitalized inmate PE application and this is going to be something appointed to the PE coordinator. The inmate PE application is the online application that was accessed by the PE staff at their hospital. Those that are PE staff are very familiar with this application and so I'll go over the changes that were made to accommodate the new PE inmate process. This is what the PE staff see when they log on. Only certified PE providers have access to this system. The information on this system is protected by privacy laws. At the top of the page, there are different titles. The list of applications is where you'll be able to view all of the applications that the PE provider has submitted. You can also print applications from this page. To complete an application, you enter, you click on enter an application. There's been no changes to this page. This is the same standard introduction language on other PE applications. You want to check off that you're going to be making a PE for NJ Family Care application, which is for children and adults. Remember, the hospitalized inmate must still be a U.S. citizen or a qualified immigrant that has five years of legal residency. It's assumed that the inmate is single, that they're not working with no income, and they are New Jersey residents since they are residing in a New Jersey correctional facility. Again, they must be 64 or under. There needs to be a New Jersey address. 
There must be a telephone number in case the PE provider has to follow up with them about something. We talked about that on an earlier screen. It would be wise to use a telephone contact for someone responsible at the correctional facility. Perhaps there is a PE correctional staff liaison. What address and telephone number would, should be entered should be worked out with the sending correctional facility. After you enter the information, you may need to verify the address. Then click Next. There is no change on this page. Add the single adult person that is an inmate that is being hospitalized or admitted to the hospital. Enter the inmate's name, date of birth, and their sex. This is how the application will look once you add the single adult inmate that is being hospitalized. You can see inmate up at the top and you see their name in the box. You are applying for PE for this person. Enter their social security number if you have it. Hopefully the correctional staff that brought them to you will bring that with them. This application will be sent for full processing to the CWA in the same county as the correctional facility. And upon release, the CWA is going to need to process this for full eligibility. They will need that social security number. So if you have the social security number, please enter it now. Social security numbers are not required for PE, but if you have it, enter it. The CWA can process it for full eligibility if they have it. This page is done. The first box has been checked, which indicates that the inmate has zero income, no employment, no payments, and nothing is being made. So this page is completed for you. This is a familiar page also. You don't have to pick a doctor, who's the doctor, you don't have to fill in the address. You don't have to choose a health plan. Again, this is fee for service only. The income comment box on this page is pre-populated with the word inmate, but you can type in additional information. Use this box to tell the state of the admission date. You have 72 hours from the date of admission to complete and submit an application. Be sure to indicate the admission date when you submit the application to the state so that they will know when to establish the start of an eligibility segment. So now you want to review this application. Make sure it's correct before you submit it to the uh, state. It will go to the state unit and again simultaneously it will go to the county welfare agency where the jail or the correctional facility is located. These are the statements that you agree to. Click I agree with the statements. Click Next. You must choose your PE provider location. No change here. PE providers know how to do that. This is the confirmation page that um, shows you that one copy has been electronically sent to the state unit for processing and the same version has been sent electronically to the county welfare agency where the correctional facility resides. It may be a best practice to give a copy of this to the staff with the inmate for their corrections file. The inmate does not get a copy so the PE provider will keep a copy of the application and it may be a best practice to give a copy to the correctional staff that uh, transported the inmate. This confirmation page may serve as an indicator or a reminder to the county correctional facility to alert the CWA that this PE application will need to be processed when the inmate is about to be released from corrections. If that, inmate, if that application is still timely, it can be processed for full family care determination. County inmates generally have a shorter stay, and that PE application may still be viable, and it might be able to be processed when they're released. State inmates usually have a longer stay, so correctional staff there complete a new application which is processed by the state vendor when their inmates are up for release. This is part of transitioning of the inmates back to society and helping them to access full NJ family care benefits. Again, it would behoove all counties to build a working relationship with their partnering correction facility, the local CWA, and the partnering hospitals to establish a coordinated effort. 
When the inmate is ready for release, the county correctional staff should call the CWA to alert them so that the pended application can be processed for appropriate eligibility. As mentioned, the state correctional facilities have a process in place to help the inmate apply for NJ Family Care prior to their release so that the eligibility can be reviewed for full comprehensive coverage upon their release. This section is purposefully left blank. This field is not required for the PE inmates. This is where you would, would, would have entered their HMO and their doctor and their doctor's address. That will be blank. Thank you for your time for listening to this presentation. If you have any other questions, please visit our website.